Hey guys, what's up? Well, welcome to my first part of my Armored Core series Let's Play. We're going to be playing as the independent mercenary for this run. This is the hardest uh, starting mech you can have. You get very little parts to start with, and you get this mech that's not very good on energy use. Uh, it's a very difficult mech to use, and this is what we're going to be starting with and be using the entire game. So without further ado, guys, let's get right into it. More than 10 years have passed since the National Dismantlement War. A league of corporations has taken control of the world. To escape the pollution that poisons the surface of the planet, they have built massive floating platforms called cradles. Only there, 7,000 meters above the ground, is the air clean and safe. Already half of mankind lives in the skies. The planet's surface has become a battlefield where armies fight to control the resource plants that feed the cradles. As the war came to a close, giant humanoid weapons called Armored Core Nexts enabled the League to firmly establish their rule of the planet. Their pilots are called Lynx. Fearing the power and independence of these Nexts, the League left them behind on the surface. The Lynx now work as mercenaries for an organization called Collard. While the League armies derive their power from massive arms forts, the once mighty Nexts are consigned to the poisoned Earth, serving as foot soldiers in the never-ending economic war. All right, and there we go, chapter one. So we're gonna go ahead and start right off by loading a saved game. So we're gonna go ahead and press new saved data. This is just in case the cutscenes decide that they don't really want to work and crash my game. So we're going to just be very careful with that and we're going to make a save already. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to start off by first painting our mech. I'm going to use this mech for the entirety of the run. I am not going to change this mech's appearance in any way, shape, or form. I will be changing the weapons and the back weapon and the boosters and generator, but the mech itself will remain the same. So, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to do some coloring. I've always liked the color red. It's always been a nice color for the eye, but I think for this run, we're going to make it a nice orange color. And we're going to make this next white and black, as those are my two favorite combined colors. I think it makes the next look very very cool and we could probably do a little bit of purple kind of like how split moon is and we'll do some black I think for the head we're gonna make it all white so there we go that looks nice. Now let's just go ahead and make a really super simple image here. Let's see what would be cool. What would be cool to start out with? I've always liked all these little images. I hopefully we get a nice uh, array of these images when we get Armored Core 6. I feel like that would be really, really, really cool. Uh, this sword is cool. We could do... A cool teardrop would be nice. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, creatures. We. Uh, I'm gonna go with this axe. That seems pretty nice. Just doing something generic so I don't bore you guys with a 50 minute long emblem making session so there we go that's pretty neat uh, let's go ahead and color all of our weapons here so i think what i'm gonna have us do is just make it black for the time being until i decide i want to change it to something else so that looks cool all right we'll go ahead and make some neat 
setting adjustments there and let's go ahead and let's actually name our AC let me think um, we're going to go ahead and name it velocity I feel like that would be a cool name All right, now that we have named our mech, let's go ahead and go into our first mission. Hopefully um, the game treats me nice and doesn't have any crashes. Okay guys, and as I said that, um, my game completely crashed. So I guess for this playthrough, we're just going to have to completely avoid cutscenes, which sucks, but it's just the way the emulator runs sometimes and there's pretty much nothing we can do to fix it. I was playing this on my PlayStation 3, which I do have. Uh, it would be much different, but I only have my recording set up on my PC, so unfortunately, this is what we're going to have to deal with. Uh, I remember this mission being really super easy when I was little. Obviously, it's very easy now, but back then it was really super easy. Just like that. All done. Mission complete. Well done. Almost perfect. Now I wonder how effective laser blades are actually gonna be in Armored Core 6. Never really thought about it too much. I think they'll be pretty decent because developers um they stressed a lot this time on melee weapons and they really have never done that in the past. Uh, all the melee weapons and other Armored Core games have been kind of eh. Gen 2 really did a good use of them, and 3 they were decent, but Gen 4 they really kind of just plummeted. They weren't really they were that good. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead. Let's actually go in our shop and let's see what we have to buy. As you can see, we have absolutely nothing to buy. This is horrible as this is going to make the game extremely hard for us as we don't have too much to work with but nevertheless uh, let's go ahead and let's rack up some money by defeating killdozer here uh, killdozer has always been like pretty much the easiest next to fight in the game he's not even really a next he's just a glorified normal kind of like wonderful body so let's just go ahead and breeze through him some more energy back up here. I'm so used to my build where I just have tons of energy. Let's stay on this side. Now this blade is actually one of the better blades as you can see. It's not too bad of a blade to use but like I said you really don't want to be wasting too much of your time getting right up in an enemy's face and just using a laser blade. It's not really that good. So let's go ahead and let's do attack on B7. I remember this mission being very, um, very confusing. <laughs> I mean, you guys gotta remember I was eight years old when I first started playing this game. So, this level with as much depth to it, I guess is the word for it, kind of confused me as a kid. And those uh, normals that you guys saw right there were really, 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 like, aggressive. I always died to them because they just get right up on you and just pile driving take pretty much all of your health of course and that right there is why I don't ever recommend laser blades let me in here I mean I just remember what my brother telling me when I was really young I'm, he was about 13 at the time when we started playing the game uh, he always recommended the bigger, heavier builds for me. Uh, he chose a nice medium weight Rosenthal build, kind of like how you start out with uh, in the game when you're choosing what kind of mech you want to start out with. But he always recommended me the big, bulky GA one, which is usually what I ran. It was what the first iteration of my build was. I record. You guys got to remember, like back then, there was no wiki, there was no YouTube videos. I mean, YouTube and wiki was like in its infancy. So you see right there. Those guys do tons of damage if they touch you. But 
uh, Armored, uh, Armored Core was like really just a trial and error game back then. There was really no help available whatsoever. YouTube was in its infancy and so was uh, the wiki. This is 2008, you know. YouTube was like barely coming out around this time. So it was really up to you to figure everything out on your own. There was no one helping you and there was no one really guiding you on how to do it. My brother only told me uh, what he understood from the game. So we kind of just went off of that. I never really understood why they have you go all the way back here. I mean, this is the worst part of the mission. As long as you avoid it, any chance I freaking get, because it's just annoying to deal with. I don't like this mission a whole great deal. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and let's just wrap up right here. And there we go. Mission complete. Mission complete. Let's take a quick little swig. I mean, for Armored Core 6, I really hope that since they really said that the um, the story this time around, I mean, that that's horrible stats, but we're just going to take that off the chin. Don't do what I did and get molly whopped by a freaking M little normal. Anyways, uh, I hope Armored Core 6 actually has uh, a good, decent story time. And I hope there's actually a hard mode because on this game, you actually have hard mode. And, um, because I mean, they really emphasize how they are focusing on the story this time around. So, um, with that, I hope they're increasing the story length. Because your first time around Armor Core is going to be a pretty lengthy run through, but after that, it becomes really fast once you know how to breeze through these missions like I do. So, I'm very interested to see how FromSoft is going to tackle this. I hope their story is more or less the same length as Elden Ring's. I really thoroughly enjoyed Elden Ring's story. thought it was very good. A little strange that it was written by George R.R. R. Martin, but I guess that's pretty cool. I know tons of people weren't really too ecstatic about that. And I, I, can, I can see why. That's kind of no place in a video game, but FromSoft hasn't always been the best at telling stories as you can kind of tell from the armored core series only a few targets remaining Arms for identified. i wonder how and because i mean it looks like we have primal armor in the new game so i wonder how they're going to be tackling primal armor around this time and it does look like they brought back the assault armor feature as uh, I really enjoyed the assault armor feature, it lets you uh, lets you use a very unique tactic to drain your opponent's primal armor and also deal great damage to them. So I'm kind of interested to see what exactly they're gonna do. Now we just unlock some parts real quick. I'm gonna press save. Let's see what parts we unlocked as far as weapons wise. Okay, uh, nothing, pretty pretty much. Um, all we got is, I'm actually gonna take this off for the time being. Actually, let's see if we have something better. Cause I mean, that does, that eats at your energy consumption. Okay, here we go. This is something I can work with. So we're going to go ahead and purchase this Labita rifle right here. And I'm going to purchase some scatter missiles. Alright, there we go. And like I said, I'm not changing the mech appearance at all. I'm going to buy this Omir part. Uh, I believe we have assault armor capabilities. I'm not too sure. I didn't really pay attention too much. We're going to buy that FCS. Let's go ahead and let's throw this on our uh, armor decor here. We're going to keep this Hitman machine gun because this is the best machine gun we have available to us at the moment. So we're going to change the FCS. We're going to change the booster. Keep the back booster because we didn't buy anything new. And we're going to keep all the rest of it the same. All right, now let's go into our next mission. Mission. Retake Cradle 2-1 and 
eliminate the Liliana insurgents. They're extremists, but they can only deploy normals. No match for a next. You should have little problem taking them out. I remember this, uh... Elia build. Uh, now, what we're running is a Freelionard model from Armored Core 4. And for those who don't know, Armored, uh, in Armored Core 4, Freelionard was eradicated by White Glint, aka you. You eradicated Freelionard in Armored Core 4 on one of the last few missions available. So. Once they were uh, annihilated, uh, Omer Science kind of seized their assets and continued working. Uh, Akivit survived uh, just barely, I believe. And BFF was actually almost eradicated by EU as well. Um, but by Omer Science technology kind of pulled them out of the water when uh, White Glint went and sunk their capital ship nearly caused the company to collapse all so it makes sense that the independent is going to be well, an old model now as say. far as the war is concerned this is an out-of-date model uh, Berlioz did use this model and he used mixed match parts and he was very efficient at what he did uh, he was really cool. I remember being seven years old and watching uh, the intro cinematic to the game, and I thought that that was the coolest shit ever. Uh, I thought he was such a badass, and then it got even better when you watch the Armored Core for Answers trailer. That probably is my favorite gaming trailer to date. Armored Core 4, I <laughs> uh, in my opinion, was uh, substantially harder than um, Armored Core for answer in the sense that it was a lot slower. I mean, when you go to play the game, you're going to notice that it's a crap ton slower. And um, the lock-on system is not as good as it is in this game. The lock-on system is much more traditional to Gen 3 and Gen 2. So it's a little nerve-wracking sometimes trying to aim and not get completely destroyed by the AI in that game. The AI go absolutely insane as they have perfect tracking all the time. This mission is also super boring. I just tend to absolutely just blaze through it. You shoot these tankers and it does a pretty good job of just getting you through the entire game. Oh, that's a little empty here. This area looks clear. Head elsewhere. Time is of the essence. Arms board confirmed. That's our bonus target. Prioritize it. Okay. Enemy arms board down. God, that fucking that that booster is so freaking fast. I forget how fast that over booster is. We'll do it just one more time because it's just. I mean, my god, it's just so freaking fast. But then the love assault armor so much, I would pick that as my main booster or my main over booster. All the really in our parts just have so much energy drain to them but that that comes with the they are the fastest moving parts in the game They're the fastest boosters for sure we're gonna go ahead and start our next mission now i really love these things in this game the vanguard over boost or the vob this thing is always pretty fun. It's basically just a NASA rocket strapped to the back of your AC. And as you can see, we are going to almost 2,000 kilometers, which I believe is close to 1,500 miles in the uh, Imperial system. So, I mean, that's, that's freaking fast. That's basically Mach 1 reaching Mach 2. 
I mean, you just go stupid fast in this game. I mean, the, the, if this game was anywhere realistic, I mean, let's be real, it's not. But if it was realistic, I mean, your neck would basically freaking snap at moving, doing a, a, a lunge like that. I mean, it would snap your whole body in half. It's just way too fast for any human to be able to handle. Maybe in, like, this universe they have um, some kind of suit that, like, prevents you from experiencing that much cheese. Who knows? But in real life, that would absolutely snap your neck. Way too much G-Force. This mission is pretty simple, too. These just flying um, whatever jets are just... You can do a lot of damage to you if you're not careful, so do your best to avoid their plasma firing. Get above them, they can't really shoot you once you're above them, so just keep firing. I remember in Verdict Day they had these things that looked eerily similar to the bombers they had. Because in Armored Core Verdict Day they had the foundation that went into the towers that the companies had built before. The entire world basically went under and it is rumored widely that either the first ending in this game or the second ending in this game is the canon ending um, basically once all the cradles fall to the ground the companies built these massive towers to hide everything in them and they basically were essentially just like big giant rockets that were meant to take off into space to go into different uh, worlds basically and uh, before they could do that the war just broke out and the companies went under and then that's when we know Armored Core 5 takes place what exactly happens uh, we probably will never really know unless Miyazaki just one day decides he wants to drop the entire lore but I really honestly doubt that will ever happen So, let's see what we can buy here as a result of our mission success. So, I can't remember which missiles. These missiles are very freaking strong. I recommend you use those. We have the grenade cannon, just like Berlioz used when he was... And that. We're gonna go ahead and actually um, equip that. We don't have any FRS, so I don't think I will actually be able to use this cannon. But god damn, I love that cannon. It absolutely will shred anyone that comes near you. I mean, it is absolutely insane. It really is. Uh, it does 25 thousand when no one when the, your enemy has no primal armor left i mean that is just insane amounts of numbers i mean it's just it's just practically unheard of i'm gonna keep the alaya generator because that's actually one of the better generators in the game and that's actually what i run on my personal build so we're just gonna go ahead and keep that doesn't look like we can do any weight reduction at the moment so we're gonna just go ahead and put the scatter missiles back on Gonna go ahead and save the game really quick and we're gonna go ahead and hit attack on richland i don't want to fight gigabase in this first playthrough uh gigabase is just a really annoying mission but it's one of the first arms forts you fight next to this one and it's honestly really cool to go up against it so when fighting these arms forts i just directly over boost directly to them and then we can just fire directly under him. And this basically shields you. All enemy fire. There we go. It's destroyed just like that. Now, as far as the story for Armored Core for Answer goes, um, basically, an Armored Core for Omer Science Technology is basically the uh, puppet masters of everything and white glint or other words you in armored core 4 
you are a soldier that is injured in battle and Fiona Jarnerfeld takes you into the colony of Anatolia and basically uh, rescues you. And this is when Anatolia was coming short on funds. So her father, or excuse me, the um, the uh, clan leader basically, or the colony leader, um, Gerald, I, be I believe his name was, uh, Tick takes over uh, the funding after Fiona's father dies because Fiona's father was in charge of the basic income as he was a scientist for uh, Omer Science Technology and Raylionard. So when her father died, all that funding basically went away and Emil took over that funding. So they basically took the rest of their funding and gave an AC to what we know as Anatolia's mercenary or White Flint. They basically have him go out on a bunch of missions to sustain money with the, um, the colony. But more on that later. We're going to fight Motherwell. Now, in the first mission we, w we went on, White Flint actually fights Motherwell just like the trailer because Omer Science Technology basically wants to kill him. Omer Science Technology does not like White Glint. They fear he is too powerful and will eventually eliminate them. As you know, White Glint is a part of Line Arc, and Line Arc opposes the League and Kalard. And the League is basically just Omer Science Technology. But that is why you see White Glint in that trailer. They tried sending him to kill him, but as we know, White Glint lives. Now, let's hope my frames don't eat utter shit on this mission. Since this game is just so old, it runs pretty rough when it comes to arm support missions. Or when, when lots of explosions happen, the game's frame rate really suffers. Now, when you're fighting Mother Will, go for these missile launchers and then the big cannon and you basically win this mission. I remember being 8 years old and this mission absolutely broke me as a kid. Uh, it took me, I wanted to say, at least <laughs> two weeks before I actually did this mission. And it was just that hard for me when I was little. And like I said, there was just no information out there that you had on how to actually build your mech and how to keep these arms for it. And it was just, it was 2008. So, not too much uh, information was out there at the time. Confirmed. Mother Will has fallen. Mission complete. Now you can really call yourself an elite mercenary. God, one thing I really love about this game is the music. I mean, the music in all the armor core games is just beautiful. That's one thing they do really well in. The dramatic silence before it blows up. God, I remember beating this when I was eight years old and just being so freaking just always oh, jumping up and down. Couldn't believe I beat it. It was so awesome. There's our awesome AC right there. Velocity. It's always cool seeing those those third person shots of your AC. They did that a lot in Verdict Day and uh, Five. And I really enjoyed that. All right, so we got 10 units of FRS memory. Let's see if that allows us to put on the grenade launcher. It doesn't. And man, that really sucks because that is honestly one of the coolest parts or one of the coolest grenade launchers. It sucks. It weighs so much weight. Uh, Let's see if maybe let's see if maybe we can buy some different generators or something that will maybe lighten the load. I went to the wrong screen. The Lubita rifle isn't too heavy, it seems. <laughs> that that generator will help. 
It'll let us put the grenade launcher on, but man, that generator is just so good. I don't want to have to drop it, but it's looking like I might have to. So let's just say fuck it and let's buy the generator and put the grenade launcher on. And there we go. Now we have the grenade launcher. And I think that's going to wrap it up for this first part, guys. Uh, stay tuned for the next part where we are going to tackle chapter two. And yeah, guys, I'll catch you later.